what's going on you guys my name is gambit today holy crap two videos in one day Pfft. i don't know if this is going up on friday but i'm recording it on friday um it depends if i stream or not so anyway today we're talking about 12 wins and the bandit challenge which is freaking awesome now i wasn't planning on getting 12 wins this early because i was just going to do it live but as you can see we're on my other account that was given to me by a friend and I went ahead and used my free entry. As you can see, this this account is no gems. So I had one try, one try to get the bandit, and there she is. Isn't she beautiful? Oh, it's so, so beautiful. Oh, God, I got it my first try. Anyway, guys, I'm just going to go over a few replays, give you a little bit of tips and tricks into doing this. I'm, um, And then I'll show you my 12th win, which was actually probably one of the closest battles I had. So as you can see... W's, 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 W's. I lost here. I had no chance. I had double giant barbarian hut. The deck was so expensive. Wins, wins, wins. I know I went 12 and 2. I think I lost my second match. Now it looks like my third, maybe fourth, fifth. Fifth match? Yeah, five matches. God, that's insane. No, these are the. That's the video I did earlier. Never mind. So it was. Was it my first match? I lost my first match. Oh my gosh. Anyway, I'm just going to go through and show you some of my favorites. Um, I, I like this one. I think I'll show you this one. For some reason, I had Graveyard a lot. People were giving me Graveyards so often. Like, I had Graveyard almost every battle, and it was ridiculous. Because anytime the I had Graveyard, the other person had given it to me. I never got the option to pick it, I don't think. I might have once or twice. But they were always giving it to me. Now, I chose Bandit here. Um, I choose Bandit a lot because the Bandit is a really good card, and I'm so glad I at least have it on this account. Now, on my Gambit account, I will try as many times as it requires. Hopefully, I can just get it on the first time as well. We'll see. But the Bandit is a really good card, as in if it's a lot like the Dark Goblin. You can just drop him on the bridge, and you get tower damage. Like It's, it's almost unstoppable to get tower damage. So right here, you know, Bomb Tower, that's easy. Gave him a Mortar. I had the Bomb Tower. Um, that was kind of his win condition, so being able to shut that down. Oh, oh, this is this guy. This dude's got the Goblin Barrels. This, this match is extremely close. I remember this match. Anyway, so I'm just kind of chillaxing here. I know I have the Battering Ram. The Battering Ram's a really good underrated card. Um, I just dropped it on the other side, see if we can get some damage off. He's going to go ahead and drop his Skeletons, or, or his Witch, my bad. He drops his Witch. We're, we're lagging a little bit here in the replay. And, you know, I get to, I got the charge off. You know, it's not great, but it's not terrible, you know, getting the charge shot. I did go ahead and pull them together because I thought the bomb tower would throw one more time. Didn't work out too well. So I dropped my bandit just to deal with his witch, and then that happened. So I went ahead and arrowed. Um, uh, I went ahead and arrowed, and he's got a goblin barrel immediately ready, and I am dead broke. So I let that, that goblin barrel go. I'm too broke to deal with it, so I just went and let it go. It's kind of ironic because I just made a how to counter, counter the, go the goblin barrel video. So, And then I don't counter it very well in this video, even though I have a tornado. Anyway, let's go ahead and continue to watch as I push with the battering ram, which is hopefully it does get... It doesn't get a shot onto that tower. I'm really hoping it was. See, now, it's kind of weird. The battering ram is inconsistent. Because sometimes when it hits, the barbarians will both pop out in front. And sometimes when it hits, they'll just be in a line together. I don't know what decides what angle they pop out at. But it's weird. It's When they pop out both in front, it's really good. When they don't, it's not. So right here, I'm going to drop a bomb tower. It's got really good placement. It's going to hit that princess and the take out the mortar. So... That was a really good spot on that bomb tower. Pat on the shoulder, Gambit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyway, moving on with the rest of this battle. I'm just going to be chillaxing here. He's going to throw it in the goblin barrel. He throws it a little deep, so as you can see, I was going to set the counter. He does get a good poison here. Um, luckily, the bandit actually does it, has a lot of HP. Um, right here, what I was trying to do is tornado it before like anything got... All the skeletons got targeted by my bandit, but the bandit still wound up not being targeted and just destroying that tower. So right here, I'm going to go ahead and arrow. No big deal. Arrow's pretty easy. Um, counter to it. I'm going to go ahead and take out this princess. I don't want any chip damage. I'm going to drop the wizard here against this witch. Wizard's a really good, annoying card to have in your deck. It's just, whenever you're doing these challenges, it's not so much what... You know, you're trying to build a deck. It's just picking good, useful cards, in my opinion. That bandit goes ahead and charges at that tower. It's not being targeted, but it is by the king tower. Right here, I'm going to throw the arrows down. 
And I know his other goblin barrel is coming. So I let him drop the archers just to try and... Oh no, the archers were invisible. I dropped the archers in the back. I was so worried he's going to take the tower there. So I was like, that's why I threw the thumbs up there. Alright, let's jump into another replay here. That one was really close and I really enjoyed that battle. No, I don't want to raid it. Okay. I always click later on raids. Alright, let me go into another one with... Was it th this deck? This right here I just completely destroyed with the Elite Barbarians and Bandit. I won't show that one. Where's the one where I had Bandit Ice Golem? Where are you at? Yeah, that was brutal. That was a brutal defeat. Did I? Yeah, okay. Here it is. Bandit Ice Golem. I remember this battle because it was like, this is this is the battle I showed to my clanmates kind of as an, as an example. To, you just have to adjust to whatever they have in these Bandit challenges because... It's not so much, hey, pick this card because it's really good, or it will it will complement this card. I mean, that's good, but whenever you're actually battling, you can't just use that combination every time because what if they counter it beautifully? Then you can't keep using that combination. It's not just not going to work. So right here, I have the balloon. This is a really good example because I'm going to go ahead and start off. I'm just going to tell you. I'm going to start off with a balloon uh, ice school and push here in a second. Uh, I dropped the archers down in the back and he just he's gonna counter it really well and I'm not gonna do that anymore in this game because I know he's got such a good counter to it um, if he would have rocketed that archer I would have been laughing and taken his tower but he saved it smart and rockets my balloon so what I'm never gonna use that again <laughs> to be honest and then I have the electro wizard take the electro wizard every time it's like the bowler. You should always take the bowler. You should always take the Electro Wizard. And if you're good with the graveyard, always take the graveyard. Because those cards, they're so good on defense and translating that into an offense. Which is what the the draft challenge is really about. Because you never really know what they're going to have. And right here, I knew he had a free spell. And luckily, oh, thank you, it didn't catch the Valkyrie. I knew he had a free spell because I gave it to him. Look at this push right here. So weird. Ice Golem, Bandit, Valkyrie, Minions. And... All this is going right for his tower. That that Infernal Dragon ain't going to do much. He, I don't know why he's hovering his clone. He didn't have much to do with anything. And right here, we're going to go ahead and take down this first tower with something I would have never thought to push with while making this deck. You just kind of got to wing it, almost. Just kind of go with the flow. Once you get that, you're doing good. I'm going to go ahead and zap here. And then watch this really good value out of my Electro Wizard. He drops the... Uh, Fire Spirit sound on underneath the me, the minion horde, so that's really good value out of there for me. And right here, I I want to play my balloon. I do. I could probably could have three crown this guy if I wanted to. And then I'm gonna go ahead and play the archers there. He's gonna go ahead and freeze, so I'm gonna drop my minions down. Now I couldn't really decide if I wanted to go for the three crown or not, so I went ahead and did this. I believe he rockets this. Yeah, there he goes. He's gonna rocket down my bandit, which I mean. It's it's what destroyed his tower last time. Now that I know he doesn't have any rocket, I'm going to go ahead and drop the balloon here. This Infernal Dragon will lock on. I probably should have zapped it, and I probably would have taken his tower. But I just let it go because I wasn't really hurting for it. I definitely could have 3 crown this guy if I wanted to. Um, during this match, I was like, he's definitely going to take the second tower. I don't want to get greedy. I don't really go for 3 crowns too often just because it feels so greedy. Um, but right here, I'm going to go ahead and drop down the Ice Golem in front and the Bandit. And he's going to go ahead and rocket all that again. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, play my balloon and take out the second tower. Um, no problemo. And the balloon's going to go ahead and go for the king tower. If that Electro Lizard would have gotten one more shot off, definite three crown for sure. Um, right here, he's going to freeze it. He just doesn't want to get three crowned. Which I mean, I understand here. Um, then he kind of like gives me the laughy face. So when um, I three crowned, I actually wind up doing three crown him. I forgot. I kind of gave him the thumbs up because he was like trying to like BM me a little bit because I couldn't get the three crown and then wound up getting it. So I don't usually BM, but whenever you're going to be a jerk, I mean, I'm going to do it right back. So that was a really good match. I really did enjoy that match. And that's kind of a good example of what you need here. And then uh, these are both good matches, 11 and 12. They were both such good matches. You know what? Screw it. I'm going to show you both of them. Who cares? Anyway, let's go ahead and get into this. Witch or minions? This is a hard choice for me because they're both really useful. But I'm going to go ahead and take the minions because who knows what he's going to have. And minions, are, I think, are more reliable for the three elixir than five for a witch. I'm going to go ahead and give him the princess um, because I want the llama hound. Right here, I take the mortar because it's a better defense. And the bandit, right? Yeah, 
I take the bandit because I have no ground units so far, and I gave him a princess and everything like that, and I want to be able to counter said princess. So I take the bandit. I was thinking about the ice wizard, but I don't have any counters to the bandit, so I had to take the bandit there. Um, right here, I'm just going to go ahead and play my mortar. Um, he played his furnace, so I'm going to drop my mortar there um, just to take out his furnace. He is going to try and defend it with his witch. Um, I wouldn't say it's really worth five elixir to try and defend it. I mean, it made me spend my lumberjack. I don't know why we're lagging here, but... Um, I'm just kind of chillaxing here. I know I've got the Lava Hound. I know he has a Tesla. Um, that's And this Furnace. And I'm assuming that's his only defenses at this point. Because usually you don't have more than two buildings um, in these draft challenges. They're pretty nice that way. Um, my Bandit right here is going to go ahead and switch targets to the tower and charge that tower. That's a good amount of damage, guys. That's, that's almost 400 damage. I know it's not. It's about 350-ish. Somewhere around there. It's almost 400. And... Um, it's really deadly. So I knew I had the arrow, so I went ahead and dropped the minion horde, and then he drops a fireball. I didn't know he had it, so that kind of sucked. I'm going to go ahead and drop my minions just to try and kill this musketeer and everything. He has a wizard and a musketeer, which are really good against the lava hound and anything I put behind it. Um, so right here, I'm going to drop another... Uh, I thought I was going to drop a mortar, but he, he learned his lesson. He played that furnace in the back. Um, I'm going to go ahead and drop a mortar here on defense, because it's really... It's a really good defensive card, especially against his deck. As you can see, his deck are just all support cards. Um, he has no tank or anything for it, and it will soak up these fire spirits. One thing I hate about this mortar... Look at this. Look at this. He's going to shoot and miss. Seriously? Come on. And it's... Uh, it's I don't know. I don't like that about the mortar. Come on. Make it shoot and hit the fire spirits. It's Nothing should move faster. Right there, I get a really good mortar shot, though. Hits them... Musketeer hits the witch and the fire spirit. So right here, I just dropped my mini horde to clean up and my arrows. Probably could have hit the furnace with my arrows and eliminated that last shot of it. Wasn't really thinking then. Now I remember. Um, right now he's got four fire spirits running at me, so I'm just gonna go ahead and absorb all those uh, with the lumberjack. I'm gonna go ahead and drop the mortar again to deal with the, all these troops because they're all range support troops. The mortar can hit all of them, and it's such good value. It's going to go ahead and hit the one fire spirit there. I'm going to drop a mega because I want my mortar to stay alive to absorb those fire spirits. Because I will lose if I let those fire spirits gang up on my tower. Right there, mortar still getting really good value. Um, yeah, so right here, this is where it gets crazy, guys. This is I'm just warning you here. I'm going to drop the mortar a little aggressive so I can take out that furnace and uh, have the protection of the lava hound. It also can hit the tower if it gets through everything. But he drops that Tesla and it kind of absorbs everything. And then he BMs me. You know, you guys know my rule if you watch my streams. I don't BM people. I say good game and everything like that. And I do a lot in these these battles. You know, they're nice people. Um, but whenever you BM me, if I beat you, I'm going to BM you hard. So at this point in the game, I'm thinking, I'm like, okay, I can't break through. I can't get through. I know I can't get through. Um, I'm trying really hard to get through here. I'm trying everything I can. This this bandit's going to get the ice wizard down, but this is, I mean, I'm like, he's got double furnaces over here, and then watch what he does. I'm going to go ahead and drop the mortar on defense. He's going to drop another furnace on that right side, so I'm like, dude, you know what? Screw this. Go on left side. Drop my mega. Drop my lava hound. He has no furnaces to help defend him. He has uh, that wizard. My mortar is now firing. I got my lumberjack down underneath of him. I'm going to go ahead and take out that musketeer real quickly. My lumberjack is onto the tower. He's going to miss his fireball onto my lumberjack. Whammy. Thousands of damage. The lumberjack is scary, man. It's so, it's so good. Um, right there, I kind of panicked. Um, dropped my bandit there. I didn't want to take too much fire spirit damage just in case he had a rocket or something. I wasn't really counting his cards. Right here, I'm going to go ahead and drop my lava hound again, along with a mega minion. Um... Tesla's going to get hit by my mortar. He does drop a really good musketeer there. I'm going to go ahead and drop the lumberjack underneath again. And again, this lumberjack's a beast, man. He missed. That fireball was worthless. I'm just going to go ahead and arrow just to kill those fire spirits. And bam! That's a tower. I gave him a cry face because he was kind of BMing me a little bit. Um, he thought for sure we were just going to draw, I think. And he was just going to give me the old BM. And we wound up pulling out that W. That was... Oh, I was on the edge of my seat during this battle. And then to go into this last battle... Prepare yourself, guys. It's close. Look at the decks. Look, Just look at the decks. It's like a real match here. We have Giant Bowler Prince versus Royal Giant Three Musketeer. 
Like, it's a crazy... There's These are, like, two actual decks. I mean, my deck's really expensive. His is a little bit... This is expensive too, but I don't think it's as expensive as mine. So right here, mm, it's a hard choice. You know, I don't know if I'm going to get another tank or anything because I've already been burned once. I picked the Royal Giant and then got the Giant from him, and I wind up losing that match because he had a P.E.K.K.A. So I picked the Three Musketeers here. I didn't want to give it to him, um, and then I take the Log because um, I need something cheaper. I can't afford to have that Rocket with me. So um, right here, I'm not sure what I'm going to do here. You know, I don't have too many things that can go directly behind a Royal Giant. No minions, no Ice Wizard, no nothing. So I'm just going to go ahead and lay down a regular Dark Prince in the back. Just see what's up. He's going to go ahead and play his Prince. I already know this. Because, um, guys, I was on the edge of my seat this battle. I'm like, all right, I'm at 11, 11 and 2. We're about to find out if I'm going to get the Bandit or not. Going to go ahead and drop the Three Musketeers. I know he's got the Rocket, so I'm never going to play him in the back. He will Rocket them. Um... Which uh, will turn out to be really well played because he hit my ice goal on two, which allowed his prince to get a charge shot, which really sucks. So right here, I'm like, all right, I got to collect myself. I can't be spending elixir that aggressively anymore. For the rest of this battle, you'll see me. I'll be a little bit more conservative um, in how I spend my elixir. And then I will also always draw out his rocket for the rest of this game because I don't want him to use it on my tower. So I draw it out with three musketeers. Yes, it's expensive, but it actually works out. So right here... The Royal Giant is by far the reason I win this game because I can't get there with anything else. He's got Bowler, Witch, Prince, Giant, Baby Dragon. Those are all really hard to get through on defense. So, luckily right here, my archers do take out that Bowler. He's going to play his Giant right in front of the Witch. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and play my Mini P.E.K.K.A. on top of his Witch. Go ahead and take that out. Going to drop my Bandit right there. This Giant's going to get a ton of damage. I really wish Giant would get a little bit of a nerf. Not so much a health nerf it needs an attack nerf it shouldn't be doing 300 damage right here my bandit is going to go ahead and get me a charge shot which is awesome and the minions actually leave it um to just do its business on his tower so he's got 700 health on my tower i've got 800 on his this is a close battle guys and i know he has a rocket i don't have any direct damage besides a log um i was going to drop my rg he dropped the baby dragon i don't want to give him any free damage so i'm just going to go ahead and play my dark prince he is going to drop his bowler. I was hoping it would splash through the bowler, but it didn't. Um, I'm going to get a few shots on the bowler. So right here, I'm going to draw out his rocket. Um, I do not want him to rocket my tower. He's just going to rocket the two musketeers, which leaves the one to help me on defense. That was really nice. I'm targeting this giant this time. I do drop an ice golem just to slow it down. He does get one punch. Oh, man. We are so close to rocket range, but he has no other direct damage. So he has to get to my tower. Um, right here, we're going to go ahead and drop the royal giant. We're just doing work here, okay? Um, gonna go ahead and drop... I don't know why I just dropped the Dark Prince. Um, I think I just wanted to take out that Prince, yeah. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and log, because I know I'm only a log and a half away. I'm gonna go ahead and drop my Musketeers again, because I do not want him to be able to rocket my tower. Um, right here, he cannot... Or, he does rocket my tower. Alright, he's 40 health, and then he plays the Giant on the other side, and I drop my Roll of Giant, GG. Oh, man, it was so close. Right here, I was like, yeah! I was so excited. I was, like, screaming down here. I was like, yes! Thank God! You know, I was so happy. Oh, man, guys, 42 health. I won the Bandit with 42 health on my tower. You could see that's the last battle of the Bandit Challenge. Whew! I can breathe now. That was so exciting. A lot of these battles were really close. So close. And our rewards here is the Bandit. I still have the new badge on it, but I'm going to go ahead and take it off. And here are the stats for a level one bandit. Um, what's his what's his damage per second? Dash charge three twenty. So maybe it's closer to three hundred, but it still does a lot of good damage. Um, dash range four to six tiles. That's pretty good. Um, ooh, there's a show tournament standard. That's the same anyway. Hit points seven fifty. So it's pretty tanky. Um, it's definitely got some health. If you haven't used your free entry yet, do it. It's worth it. If you get to six wins, you get a free magical chest. You get to eight wins, I believe. Eight or so wins. You get 25,000 gold. And that alone, that's worth And it's free. It's absolutely free. And, and you'll get a gold chest, 8,000 gold, a magical chest, 25,000 more gold. And the bandit plus the 12 win chest. It's totally worth it, guys. Give it a try. It's not too hard. Just adjust to what your opponent plays. I'm going to give it a go on my Gambit account later on tonight. 
And if I can't stream tonight, then I'll do it Sunday. I'm not going to try it until I am live. So that's really scary to have on my Gambit account because what if I fail a bunch on Sunday night? Who knows? We're going to try it together. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up for today's video. Hopefully you guys did enjoy it. I'm going to head back to MoBeta with this account and um, just chillax and brag about my new bandit there, even though most of them already have it. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. If you are new, if you learned something, leave a subscription, leave a like. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.